Looking closer, she saw that the RV's interior was brightly illuminated. She could clearly see a desk through the vehicle's side windows, and she was then startled to see a figure dressed all in black stride into view, pull up a seat and sit down at the desk. As she strained her eyes to make out the details, she was perplexed to notice that the figure was wearing a helmet and some kind of uniform. Was this person from the military? Why was he casually sitting down at his desk in the middle of the Sherman's ranch? Gwen was still asking herself these questions when the figure suddenly stood up and marched to the door of the RV. As she peered out at him, she realized that he was unusually tall, perhaps even seven feet. She could also now make out the details of his uniform. He had a black visor covering most of his face and knee-high boots on his feet. She also noticed something troubling, the entity, who or whatever it was, appeared to be looking right at her. Perhaps the visor was a pair of long-distance night vision goggles, because Gwen had the distinct feeling that even from the considerable distance between them, the being was able to watch her every move. The same terror she had experienced earlier in the evening with the sighting of the unknown aircraft returned anew with this latest apparition. Gwen quickly averted her gaze and closed her curtains, then frantically dialed her husband and asked him to come home as soon as possible. Terry raced back to the ranch, but the supposed RV was long gone when he finally arrived. Although Gwen did not see this particular object rise up into the air, its general description is very similar to the flying refrigerator that Terry had spotted several weeks earlier. Terry had initially thought that that interloper was an RV as well, that is, until it began to levitate. Whatever it was that Terry had seen, perhaps Gwen was seeing the same exact thing. However, in Gwen's case, she actually saw one of the craft's occupants. And from the way the being stared at her through vision-enhancing headgear, it appeared that even as the Shermans observed the strange phenomena of the Skinwalker Ranch, they too were being actively monitored and watched. Even before the beginning of the UFO phenomenon, it has been speculated that humanity is being observed by another sentient species. All the way back in 1898, H.G. Wells opened his famous science fiction classic War of the Worlds with the line, no one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that this world was being watched keenly and closely by intelligences greater than man's and yet as mortal as his own. Wells envisioned a Martian civilization spying on the Earth of the late 1800s with no one the wiser, but could an alien force really be sending out scouts and probes to observe humanity in its natural habitat? Humans, after all, have already sent robotic probes to most of the worlds in our solar system, so it may not be too far-fetched to suppose that if aliens exist, they've sent some probes of their own. In fact, one of the big questions for scientists searching for extraterrestrial life is, where are the probes? According to the late great Stephen Hawking, if advanced aliens ever existed at any time during the history of our 13 billion year old universe, we should have bumped into one of their mechanical probes by now. Even if the aliens themselves weren't extinct billions of years ago, their robotic probes, just like the hundreds of autonomous craft humanity has launched into space, should still be out there. Officially, at least, no scientist or NASA astronaut has ever bumped into any alien probes. But maybe they've been looking in the wrong place, because according to the Shermans, if you stick around Skinwalker Ranch long enough some very strange pieces of equipment of an unknown intelligence will undoubtedly make their appearance. They come in the form of lighted mechanical balls that seem to completely defy gravity. Terry and Gwen first encountered these odd orbs one evening, as they were out checking on their cattle. They noticed that their animals were unusually restless, and soon they too began to feel uneasy. The Shermans began to experience that strange, but undeniable feeling that someone, or something, was watching them. 
Their horses were grazing under a nearby tree, and when Terry happened to look over at them, he was startled to see what appeared to be a perfectly round glass ball floating above the tree. Blue light was emanating from its crystalline surface. Gwen turned to see what her husband was looking at and gasped in shock as the blue, baseball-sized light drifted away from the tree and slowly sailed down to one of the horses. As the pulsating blue orb hovered around the animal's head, it grew understandably agitated and stopped grazing. The object almost seemed to be filming the horse, or gathering some other kind of data, as it bathed the beast in an incredibly intense blue light. Stunned as he was, Terry was also worried about what the unknown object might do to his horse. He felt compelled to take some sort of decisive action, but before he could move a muscle to intercept the object, it abruptly rose up and shot off away from the horse. To the Sherman's amazement, it then flew right over their heads, about 20 feet above them. As the couple stared in shock, the object just hovered silently, fixed in that position, as if it were watching them intently. From this distance they could see that the object was made of crystal clear glass and was about the size of a softball or a small melon. Some blue liquid bubbled and swirled inside. Terry could also hear a slight crackling being emitted from the strange probe, it reminded him of static electricity. As the couple stared at this crackling object, they found themselves filled with fear, and it felt like a fear greater than even the unusual circumstances should merit. It was almost as if the object was somehow tapping into their emotions and purposefully triggering their fear response. Fighting through her terror, Wen grabbed her flashlight and turned it on. With shaking hands, she tried to shine it up at their frightening visitor, but the shining blue ball reacted instantly and took evasive action before the flashlight beam could illuminate it. The orb shot off into the trees for cover before flying upward and disappearing over the horizon. Whatever the object was, it obviously had no use for Gwen's flashlight beam. This craft was there to watch, not to be watched, 